Good morning, Enon. Good morning. We greet you once again in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we're so grateful to be in the land of the living once again. We thank God for all of his blessings. And we just thank God for all of you. We are going to go into our service this morning with our call to worship. And our call to worship will be as follows. Oh, praise the Lord. All ye nations, praise him. All ye people, for his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. We thank God for this opportunity to be here once again, and we welcome you into our service. We ask that you just shout if you feel the spirit moving, clap your hands, and just enjoy the service. We're going to have our morning hymn, and following the morning hymn, we're going to have our scripture and prayer, and that will be coming from Minister in Training, Patricia Robinson. Oh, God. 
Good morning. Good morning, church. I'd like to thank God for waking us all up this morning. I'll be coming from 1 John 1 and 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we will have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleaneth us from all sin. Now be coming from Deuteronomy 4, 23 through 25. Take heed unto yourself, lest yet forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God has forbidden thee. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Yeah. When thou hast begot children and children's children, and he shall have remained long in the land, and shall corrupt yourselves and make a graven image or the likeness of anything, and shall do evil into the sight of the Lord by God to provoke him to anger. Lord, this covenant we bind in a spirit covenant with you for the sole purpose of mortality, which we promise to God, our Father, that we will live and think and act in a certain way. Your way, Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank Minister Robinson for giving us that prayer and the scripture. And we thank Maddie this morning. She's minding the choir stand. Amen. We just we just ask that you pray uh, for us, <clears throat> pray for the church, and pray for each other, because we truly need to be praying for each other in this day and time. We uh, come this morning with thanksgiving, knowing that God is able. God has been keeping us, and we just thank God for all that he is doing for us. We ask that uh, you just continue to pray, continue to uh, practice uh, those safety measures so that you can stay healthy, and hopefully, you know, we are going to be back into our church in personal service soon, and we want everybody to be healthy, and we want to stay healthy. And so we're just going to continue to go forward and uh, just do what we can and continue to do the Lord's will. I just want to thank all of you for giving your gifts, and we ask that you just continue to do so uh, however you're paying, whether it's by PayPal, Cash App, or if you're sending it in the mail, we want you to know that we're very grateful for you doing so, and we ask that you continue to do so. I just want to let you know that Bible study is every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Sunday school is on Saturday evening at 7, and the number that you can call to get in on the line is 712-770-4867 and the cash and the app the, or the uh, code that you dial in is 981057 and the hash sign and then you will get in and announce your name and then you'll be in on with the group for Bible study and Sunday school. We Thank God for this beautiful weather, and it's going to uh, be getting warmer now, and also we want you to remember this coming Sunday, we spring forward with the time. The time goes up one hour, and so the days are going to be longer, and we just thank God for this beautiful weather that we had today. I understand from the weather forecast that it was 75 today in Newark. So we're going to have pretty much the same thing tomorrow, and God truly is blessing us. Amen? Amen. All right, we're going to continue to move on with our service. We're going to have another song coming from our choir, Sister Maddie, and then I shall come 
with the word. We want to lift up the name Jesus because it is Jesus that is keeping us safe today. And we just thank God for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning, with the help of your prayers and certainly with the help of the Holy Spirit, I want to going to a teaching mode this morning. I want to talk about something that I think all of us is guilty of. And I think sometimes we're guilty of this and we may not realize it. And I want to talk about this morning the condition of backsliding. And that's going to be coming from the scriptures that you heard in your reading earlier, but I shall read them again. First of all, coming from Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 23, and it says, Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee. Then in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7, you'll find these words. 
But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we come this morning thanking you for another day. Thanking you for bringing us through another week. And Lord, we know that it was you that brought us because we certainly didn't bring ourselves. Because it was you that woke us up each and every morning and started us on our way. You went with us all day long. And then, Father, you kept us safe as we went about our daily business. And Lord, we just want to thank you for that because without your guidance, without your protection, we don't know where we would be this morning. But I don't think that we would be here. And so, Lord, we just say thank you for your many blessings. Now, Lord, as I now stand before your people, I ask, O oh God, that, that you would help me to bring a word to them, a word that that will help change their lives and accept you as their personal savior. As I stand, stand with me. And as I open my mouth to speak, I ask that you speak through me. In Christ Jesus, we ask it. Amen. The condition of backsliding. I want to talk a little bit about this this morning because so much, so many of us don't realize that we are in a condition of backsliding. And so I want to ask and answer two questions this morning concerning backsliding. First of all, what is backsliding? And then secondly, who is a backslider? What is backsliding? Black backsliding is not a where a person loses their salvation. John 1 verses 11 through 13 and John 5 verse 24 it tells us that my relationship to God is based on birth and is therefore permanent the scripture says verily verily <clears throat> I say unto thee that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is but is passed from death unto life now back backsliding is breaking fellowship with god my fellowship is based on my behavior, how I act, how I carry myself. For First John chapter 1 and 17, we find that sin breaks one's fellowship with God, but not his relationship to God. Mm -hmm. The relationship of the Christian is still intact. But who is a backslider? First, a backslider is a saved person who falls into sin. And I give you some examples of people that were highly blessed and used by God. First of all, Noah. Noah was a backslider. 
Moses, Abraham, three individuals that God highly blessed. God was truly pleased with their lives, but they were backsliders. Noah got drunk one day. And then Moses, Moses was used by God to bring the people out of Egypt. And Moses was over thousands of people. And Moses had a tremendous task to bring and lead these people out of Egypt. The task was so difficult that Moses many times, he was frustrated, he was angry, and he allowed the people to get him upset. And where Moses got in trouble with God, God had told him to speak to the rock because the people were complaining about they didn't have nothing to drink. They didn't have water. God commanded Moses to speak to the rock and it would bring forth water. But Moses didn't speak to the rock. Moses hit the rock and called the people rebels because they were really, they was really giving him a difficult time with their complaining. And because Moses disobeyed God, Moses at that point was a backslider. Abraham, Abraham told a lie. He told the king that his wife was his sister. And when the king find out, he said to Abraham, why did you lie to me? You didn't, I, I get involved with your wife and then I would get in trouble with your God. And so it's very easy to fall in the condition of backsliding. Anyone out of directive will of God, that person becomes a backslider. And then thirdly, a backslider is a Christian who is filled with his own way. And what I mean about that, you're a Christian, you've been saved, but a lot of times you want to have your own way about things. And when God saved you, you have to follow the will of God. You just can't do what you want to do and expect for God to be pleased by it. We must follow the will of God. And when we follow the will of God, then we'll be all right. You see, many Christians live in a backsliding condition. There's two-thirds of us, of our lives, we are backsliders. We seem to think that if we do not commit murder, we do not commit adultery, we don't steal or get drunk, that we are living right in the sight of God. But notice what Jesus said about having murder on one's heart and looking at women to lust after her and robbing God of his tithe when we're in church. If you're not guilty of these things, then notice Proverbs 24, 9, Romans 14 and verse 23 and James 4 and 17. Proverbs and Romans, read those when you get home or while you're home. But James 4 and 17 says, remember too that knowing what is right to do and then not do it is a sin. So if you know what is right and you don't do it, you are a backslider. Backsliding doesn't just happen all at once. It's a gradual thing. The prodigal son didn't arrive in the hog pen the first day that he left home. 
You see, when he left home, he had all of his, his wealth and, and everything, and he went out. And he partied and drank with his friends and had a good time. The scripture doesn't say how long it took for him to spend his wealth, but it was after a while that he had left home and spent all that he had that he ended up in the pig pen. And then he wanted to come back home. Samson didn't go to Delilah's house first. Lot didn't move into Sodom immediately. All these things happened in a gradual sense. And my message this morning is to you who may be a long distance from God. It is to you who can't seem to find your way back and to who just lost your first love. You see, you may still have the externals, but you've lost that thrill, the fire, that compassion, or that devotion that you had at first. A good example, David. David was one of God's fervent servants. In fact, he was the apple of God's eye. But one day he got in trouble. And when he got in trouble, his relationship with God was lost. When you read Psalms 51, you will find that how he felt when he lost that relationship because he lost all of his joy, his peace of mind. And when he wrote that 51st Psalm, one of the things that he said in that Psalm, he said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. And this morning, I strongly suggest that we all stand in the mirror and take a long, hard look at ourselves because you too may be in a backsliding situation because we are a people that it's easily for us to sin because Sin is in our nature. And so if it's in our nature, we can very easily do things and not realizing that we're doing wrong in the sight of God. Now, what causes, what is the cause for backsliding? One is forgetfulness. Take heed to yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make a graven image the form of anything which the Lord your God has forbidden you. You see, when the Israelites were in Egypt, their minds had been completely changed. They stayed in slavery for over 400 years. And so they had adapted the ways that the Egyptians had. And, and they, you see, the Egyptians didn't worship God. They didn't believe in God. So they worshiped idols. And the Israelites, no doubt, had adopted some of these ways. And so when the Lord brought them out, the Lord had to condition their minds to follow his laws, to believe in him and worship him. And he had to constantly repeat to them what he wanted them to do. And so we have to be sure that we do not forget what the Lord wants us to do. When we study the Ten Commandments, those are some of the laws God has passed down, and we are to follow those laws. And when we follow those laws, then we are in the will of God. And then we need to remember what we were. 
When you look at, at Ephesians 2 and verse 1. Once you were under God's curse, doomed forever in your sins. And then we need to remember what we had. We had no joy, no peace, no home, no friends when we were out there. And now the Lord is, is, is wanting to bring us into a relationship with him. And when we get into a relationship with the Lord, Satan is going to always be around to attack and want to cause you to go against the will of God. But we have to remember and count our blessings. Also Ephesians 1 verses 3 through 4. And it says because we belong to Christ, God has blessed us with every blessing in heaven because we he because God chose us to be his very own. And then we have false worship. Deuteronomy 4 and 23 talks about that. Then forbidden images are sure to appear in the heart and mind of those who forget about God. Because when we put God out or put God aside, Satan is going to get busy. Satan is going to plant all kinds of ideas in our heads. Satan is going to tell us we can do this and we can do that. As long as we are out of the fellowship with God, Satan is, is having his way with us. Because you see, man is inherently religious. He will worship something. False worship goes in our churches. Matthew 15 verses 8 through 9 tells us, how do we do this? These people say they honor me, but their hearts are far away. Their worship is worthless, for they teach their man-made laws instead of those from God. And so you see, we have to be very careful, church, because it's very easy for us to wander away and become a backslider. And then there is our flesh, our ourselves. Romans 7, verse 18, it says, I know that nothing good lives in me. This is Paul talking. That is in my sinful nature, for I have the desire to do what is good, but I can't do it because Satan is ever present. Many allow their eyes to cause them to sin. Many allow an unforgiving spirit to, the draw, to destroy them. And many obey the lust and desires of the flesh. Then there's fashion. Romans 12 and 1. I urge you, brothers, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual worship. We are guilty of leading people to worldly people. We, 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 we are constantly introducing uh, our friends to other friends, and we are getting involved with worldly people. And God says when you become saved, you are to draw, withdraw yourself from them. Because you ever heard that old saying, birds of a feather flock together? If you become saved and you get to start hanging around again with them, you're going to fool around. And the weakest one is going to be won over to the other person. So if you're not really strong in your religion, the worldly people that you're hanging around with, they're going to win you back over and you'll be right back with them as to where you were before. And so we find ourselves, sometimes we lead young people to marry unbelievers. Now, we know what the word says about that. We are not to marry unequally yoked. 
And that means if you are a Christian, you need to be married to a Christian. Because here again, if you are a Christian and you marry an unbeliever, the unbeliever, if he's strong enough, he can draw you back out into the world. And yes, you might think, well, I'll change him or I'll change her. If the Lord doesn't change it, you certainly is not going to change them. And then there is fear. We fear what people will say about us or what people will do because we are Christians. And then there's that fear of being mocked and ridiculed. Now, let's look at the character of a backslider. Begins to pull away from their religious responsibility. This is one of the things that they do. They begin to pull away from the church, doing things in the church. They neglect the word. They neglect prayer and they neglect the church. They neglect the work and teachings of the church. They begin to find fault with everyone else. They become discontent, unhappy, and sad. A backslider has no passion for the souls of others. He's just concerned about himself. Now, all of this, we, we talked about being a backslider, but what is the consequences of an individual being a backslider? Number one, decomposition, decay, corruption. Deuteronomy 4 verse 25 says, For the Lord your God is a consuming fire. He is a jealous God. That's, that is telling us we cannot have other gods. We cannot put anybody before him. Because when you put other things before God, because God is a jealous God, God can move them out of your out of your way so that you can worship and praise him. And then when a choice of something being lower than the highest, you prefer the lower. You cor you corrupt yourself when you put something in the place of Christ. A lot of people on Sunday morning, they stay home. I got to get my rest. Or they stay home to clean their house. They stay home to mow the lawn. They stay home for this. They stay home for that. And when you start putting things before Christ, you begin to corrupt yourself. When you turn your back on Jesus for possessions, you lose both. You lose the possessions and you lose your relationship with Christ. What a picture of the church today. Church crying about the fewness and the unfaithfulness of members to God. When we are unfaithful to God, this is when we find people staying away from the church. And then another thing happens. You will experience death. If you are a backslider and you don't change your ways, you just stay in this backslidden condition, you can cause death to come to you. And then the curse. There is a curse for everything that we do out of the will of God. You become a stumbling block to others. And that you certainly do not want to do. Become a stumbling block to others. And Hosea chapter 5 and in verse 1 says this. Hear this, you priest. Pay attention. You Israelites, listen. O royal house, this judgment is against you. You have been a snare to Mizpah. You have been a stumbling block. And anybody that is a stumbling block to somebody else. And what a stumbling block is, somebody blocking somebody else's way from getting to Christ or turning their life over to Christ. You are a Christian. You profess to be a child of God. 
But you live your life all kinds of ways, doing all kinds of things, talking all kinds of ways. And somebody that doesn't know the Lord see you doing this, and they say, well, if he's a Christian and doing all of this, I can remain the way that I am and still get to heaven. You are a stumbling block to that individual. Then God will punish you for leading others astray. You don't want God to punish you. I know I wouldn't want to lead people in this congregation in the wrong way or the way I live become a stumbling block to them because if I was to do something like that, I would surely have to pay the price before God. And I don't want to be punished by God for causing somebody else to stumble because I'm going to live my life and be an example of Christ to try to bring somebody to Christ. And then all of this that I have said to you about backsliding, what is the cure for backsliding? First of all, when a person realizes that he has backslidden, the first thing that he needs to do, he needs to repent. First John verse chapter 1 and verse 9 says this, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we just remember that what, when we fall out of a relationship with God, all we got to do, church, is to repent and ask God to forgive us, give us another chance, and help us to do that that is right. And God will forgive and give you a chance. When you become a backslider, the first thing you need to do is to seek Christ. Trample your pride under your feet. Crucify your prejudice. And then put your life in God's hands. Trust in him and obey his laws and you will be all right. You see, sinning is so easy and backsliding is very easy. And as I said, many of us have been in backslidden conditions or are at present in a backsliding position. Because when you do things against the will of God and you don't ask for forgiveness or sometimes you can do things and not realize that you are doing something that is wrong in the eyes of God. And whenever you do something wrong in the eyes of God, then you have become a backslider. But in order to get out of that condition, all you got to do is to repent. And as I said earlier, we all need to stand in a mirror and take a good, long, hard look at ourselves and ask this question, is God pleased with the way that I live my life. And if I am doing something wrong, Lord, help me to do that that is right. Just like David, David sinned against God. And when he found out that he had sinned against God, he went to God and pleaded with God. And God restored their relationship. And we too, when we get in a backslidden condition, we need to repent. We need to ask the Lord to forgive us and cleanse our lives and bring us back into the relationship that where we belong. In church, I ask you tonight or this morning, check yourself. If you find and believe that you are in a backslidden position, if I were you, I would re repent as fast as I can and get in a right relationship with God. 
Because we don't know when death is going to come for us. We don't know when Jesus Christ is going to come back. We must be ready at all times. And so check yourself because it's very easy to become a backslider. And once you start doing all kinds of things like I've mentioned in my message, you have become a backslider. But it's very easy to get out of it. Just repent and ask the Lord to forgive and come back into your life. I pray this morning that someone heard the word because I, as I said earlier, there are many of us that are in backslidden conditions and don't even realize it. So just check yourself. Take a good, long, hard look at the life that you're living. Is God pleased with it? Are you pleased with the life that you're living? Because if you are a child of God, you want to please God. And you want to be able to say that you have done your very best to live the life that God wants you to live. God bless you. And may heaven smile upon you. We're going to get ready now to open the doors of the church. And if there's anybody out there that wants to join the Enon Church family, right now while we are outside of our in-person services, just give us a call. And when we come back into our services, you can come and join up with us and we will take you in. And I want to say this. Everybody needs a church home. Everybody needs to belong to a church somewhere. Because this is where we go to meet God and fellowship with other saints. And you say, well, I can serve God at home. Well, I question about that because there are many things at home that can distract you, that where the Spirit of God won't come in. But this is God's house. And this is where he said that he would meet us and fellowship with us and bless us in a mighty way. So if you don't belong to a church, I urge you to find a place today where you can worship and fellowship with the other saints. God bless you. And I pray that you have a blessed day. We're now going to have our benediction. We ask that you just bow your heads where you are. Now may grace and peace, the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the sweet communion and fellowship of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth, now and forever. Amen and amen. <laughs>